Okay, everyone ready? Radio silent. I was speaking into my stopwatch. <laughs> I'm recording. <it. laughs> All right, everyone ready? Radio silence, please. Cameras ready. Well, for starters, it's a bit slow. I mean, if I ran, it would be faster. Oh, I got him on the launch. Hello and welcome to the second ever episode of the Cars.Coza show. My name is Chiro De Siena and I'm recording this in my lounge in the middle of South Africa's nationwide lockdown. But I'm delighted to be here with you and I'm absolutely delighted that you've joined us. Coming up in this episode, I terrify myself half to death in Ford's Ranger Raptor. We meet the owner of one of South Africa's most special BMWs. We travel to a remote part of the Zambezi River to find one of the world's rarest waves. We end the show with not one, but two drag races. And we head back to my basement to take a look at the Audi A1. Now remember, the hashtag for the show is Cars Coza Show, one word. I'll be online to chat to you throughout the episode. Now, first up, Ford says their Ranger Raptor is unlike anything on the market. And luckily, it's our job to see if they're right. And so they sent us one. And well, this is quite possibly the most fun I've ever had on a car shoot. Hello and welcome to the inside of a new Ford Ranger Raptor. As you can see, I'm driving on the road, which is not really what this car is built for, but ironically, the same things which make it great off-road actually make it very good on-road. I've just driven Ranger XLT, I've just driven Ranger Wildtrak, and this is the best Ranger to drive on tarmac. I don't know, that doesn't seem to make sense, but it is. This car offers the best ride quality and even those knobbly tires aren't actually loud at all. But I think to exploit this car, to really see what it can do, you've got to take it off-road. You've got to find some sort of off-road playground. So I've had an idea. I don't consider myself terribly short, but when I stand next to a Raptor, I feel like a Smurf. And that's because the Raptor rides 50 miles taller than your standard Ranger. And many elements you're seeing here are bespoke to the Raptor. The front bumper, that's completely bespoke to the Raptor, and it's designed to give you a better approach angle. These tires developed for the Raptor. Those 17 inch rims house bigger brakes developed for the Raptor. This fender, that's a composite material, and they had to do that because they needed to really flare the front fenders, and that's because the track of the Raptor is 150 mils wider than a standard Ranger. You're not gonna get that with a fake Raptor kit. Moving down the side of the car, these magnesium alloy running boards really look the business. And then of course, on all four corners of the car, the real star of the show, and that's the suspension. At the back, you get a Watts linkage setup, and that gives you better lateral control. But the dampers here, those are sourced from Fox Racing. They were developed over tens of thousands of kilometers for this car, only for the Raptor. And those are what give this car its unique abilities. Remember when the Amarok came out with a two liter and everyone was like, ah, you know, it also comes in two liters, milk and Amaroks. Well, now the Ranger Raptor is a two liter by turbo, 157 kilowatts, 500 newton meters of torque. And yeah, maybe it should have a V8, but screw it, petrol's bloody expensive. I don't want a V8 petrol duck here, you mad. And the reality is that your peak torque figure of 500 newton meters 
comes in at 1500 RPM. That's really low. It's a clever sequential turbo setup here. Let me not go off the cliff. One smaller than the other spins up a little faster. At high speed, it'll bypass that smaller turbo as well. And that means that there's very little turbo lag. Very little at all. Very linear power delivery. Let's take a brief break from all the slidey action because I'd like to show you the interior. Ford have added lots of things which say Raptor to make you feel better about spending all this extra money on a Ranger. And to be honest, it works. I really like the steering wheel with its red detail and I really, really like the seats. They are a great blend of comfiness and supportiveness. And of course, there are the driving modes. Buyer mode or Badger, Badger? was developed specifically for this car. And let's just say it's a traction control system which helps you have the most fun possible in your Raptor. Ah, puddle! <laughs> puddle! <laughs> for me, the gearbox here should get a Best Supporting Actor Oscar because this new 10-speed which Ford developed in partnership with General Motors, which is a little bit weird. It's like Manchester United developing a player in partnership with Chelsea. Maybe they do that, I don't know. I don't watch football. But it is a great box out on the road. You barely know it's there, and that for me is what you want from a gearbox. And out here, I mean, I've got flappy paddles, but I'm leaving this thing in full auto and it just feels like it's always in the right gear. Even for doing bonkers stuff like this. <laughs> and it almost feels like they've tuned this gearbox to help you drift. I really like that. <laughs> The thing about the Raptor is that as good as it is at going fast, it's really good at going slow. It's got full low range and it really does give you the confidence to tackle just about anything. So when you aren't trying to do off-road driving at 200 kilometers an hour and you know just do some normal driving, it really does give you the confidence to do just about anything and I think that is the mark of a good 4x4. Drifting into a puddle. <laughs> sure, so maybe you could do all of this in a normal bucket, but the difference with the Raptor is that you feel like you'll never ever break the thing, no matter how hard you try. The quarry was enjoyable, but even so, I couldn't experience the Raptor's most spectacular talent here. For that, we would ideally need some sand. But we've come to the dunes because we want to jump this thing. That is what really sets this bucky apart from everything else on the market. Okay guys, I'm in position. Are you ready for me? Ready. Okay, here we go. Oh, this car is amazing! This car is amazing! I know that's what it's designed for. <laughs> oh my god, my adrenaline is through the roof. <laughs> my legs are like jelly. <laughs> <laughs> to describe how well the suspension setup works off-road and where this car really impresses is on gravel and poor surfaces it just absorbs everything out here in the sand I mean it's just epic really and look at that absolutely effortless and one of the reasons why the suspension works so well is because they've really softened the rear 
to give you extra stability. So not only do you have that wider track giving you extra stability, you have this much softer rear suspension and there is a downside to that. You lose about 400 kgs of carrying capacity and instead of being able to tow 3.5 tons like you can in a normal Ranger, you can only tow 2.5 which to me is a pretty small price to pay. I mean, how much does your caravan weigh, you know? And even the lengths they've gone to, you know, the exhaust back box, the exhaust actually ends before the rear diff. So you increase, you maximize that departure angle as well. And of course you're 50 mils taller, so your breakover angle's better. I mean, this thing is just built for this. This thing will do this all day. I jumped this thing for the cameras about eight times and not a squeak, not a rattle, not a complaint. I never felt like I heard the car. It is epic. Woo! <laughs> I promise you that Raptor went home without a rattle or a squeak. Now at Cars.coza, in all the years that we've been running our YouTube channel, we've never turned on the YouTube advertising. We wanted you, our audience, to have the best experience possible when watching one of our videos. But we've come to realize that that advertising revenue could be put to good use. And so we've just turned on our YouTube advertising and we're going to donate every cent we make to COVID-19 causes for the rest of the year. So if you watch one of our videos and you have to sit through a washing powder commercial, just know that it was worth it. Now, if you haven't seen our first ever basement lockdown review video, shot under lockdown, then you can catch it in episode one of the Cars.coza show, which is on our channel right now. But this week, without any more access to test cars, I had to make a plan. And luckily, someone in my building was happy for me to review her car. Hello and welcome back to a basement in Cape Town. Now the lockdown continues which means that I have to keep filming my car reviews underground and this time it's not a new car, it's a used car. This is the 2015 Audi A1. So the owner of this particular A1 lives in the building and she agreed to let me film the car and the cool part about the story is that she found this car on Cars.coza and then the car that she traded in was sold on Cars.coza. That's really cool. So she picked it up for 199,000 Rand, it's a 2015 and she got it with just 45,000 Ks on the clock. This was a real peach of a find. So back in 2015, this car went on sale for 298,000 Rand before you added any options. And usually when you buy a German car, you add a lot of options. So getting it for 200K about four years later is actually a pretty good deal in my opinion. But it also means that the car didn't depreciate that much, which means that if you're buying a new A1, then that's probably not a bad thing. Now I have driven this car in the real world, this particular car actually, and I found it to be enormously good fun, but I also thought it was nice and easy to drive. Now I know that's maybe a bit hard to define, but it's got something to do with the lightness of the steering wheel, the ease of changing gear, the lightness of the clutch action. I love that phrase, clutch action, clutch action. It sounds, sounds, it's not an innuendo, trying to say it's an innuendo, it's just, a, it's just an interesting term, clutch action. When you head over to cars.coza to look for your new A1 or your used A1, you'll find 296 to choose from as of April 2020. Now it's important to realize that there's sort of been three generations of A1 and the easiest way to tell the difference between the pre-facelift and the post-facelift in this generation was the shape of the headlights. So if you look at this, it's quite rectangular and a bit angry and a bit modern looking. The pre-facelift had a droop over here in the headlights and it's quite important that because when there's a facelift there's quite a few updates to the car both inside and outside and also in 2015 Audi introduced a brand new engine into the A1 range.
So with the facelift, Audi introduced a tiny little engine, a one liter three cylinder turbo petrol. Now, I don't know, call me old fashioned, but I don't know how robust or long lasting a three cylinder one liter is going to be. I mean, I don't have data on it, but Something, uh, I don't know if I'd buy into an engine that small. So when you're shopping for your A1, you've got three engines to choose from. A one liter, three cylinder, this 1.4 turbocharged four cylinder, or a 1.8. Now, if you want a very fast Audi A1, then go for the 1.8. But for me, this is the engine to have. It's got plenty power and torque for a car of this size, and it makes this car actually really fun to drive when you're not in a, in a basement. Right, the interior of the 2015 Audi A1. Now it's important to remember that particularly with German cars, there are a lot of optional extras available. So all the A1s that you might be looking at could be specced quite differently depending on what the original owner chose. So it's a good idea, I think, to have a good chat with a dealer, especially if you're buying the car over the phone or you're buying it from another city, as to what particular options have been fitted to the vehicle you're interested in. But in this particular unit I'm sitting in wow this interior has aged really really well i mean the owner picked up this car with just 45,000 k's on the clock and it is in really good condition the only thing that looks a little bit faded is the steering wheel but you know a good leather treatment will probably mostly sort that out and the only thing that's broken is the key thingy because this is meant to that's meant to sit in there and when you press that button it's meant to flip out and it doesn't which is a little bit sad Okay, let's test the back seats of the A1. Oh, something's missing there. Something's gone. Wonder what that was. Anyway, a little lever there. That folds forward. Wow, that's huge. Look how far that goes. All right, in we go. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'm what? I'm 5'9". There's enough knee room for me, enough headroom. It's a bit cramped in here. I mean, like, there's not much of a window can't open this either but no that's fine that's good I'm, I'm pretty pretty pleased with that I mean you know I don't know if you want to go to Durban or something it's sitting in there oh it's not bad Ugh. Now, prices for the Audi A1 on cars of Coza start at 75,000 Rand. And that's very, very low, isn't it? But that will take you all the way back to 2011. And I'm not sure you want to buy a car that's that old, especially one you're gonna use every day. But here comes some very strong, very important consumer advice for you. So ask the dealer when the warranty on your car was registered because sometimes the warranty is registered quite a bit before the sale of the car so if you want to know exactly when your warranty ends you need to know when it was registered then you add five years to that aha see that's that's what this that's what these videos are for important consumer advice So when I was researching this video, went onto Google and typed in Audi A1 problems and a whole bunch of sites came up and a whole bunch of owners around the world reporting that this was either the best car they've ever bought used or the worst car they've ever bought. So it's super difficult for me to tell you that you're going to have reliability issues with this car or not. That being said, I think if you go for this engine and this gearbox and you go for as low mileage as possible and as young a car as possible, then potentially you won't have that many headaches. Just find yourself a good Audi or Volkswagen mechanic who can help you look after it. So as a product, reliability aside, what do I think of this five-year-old A1? Well, I think it's aged really well. It still looks really good and the interior still feels very fancy, very premium and full of options. So when this car came out, it was about 300,000 Rand. Now it's 200,000. And if you've got about that much to spend and you really want to get into one of the premium German brands, I think that's a pretty good way in. You know, I think I have to be careful with these videos. If I start making them too well, the accountants at Cars of Cosa are going to ask me why I need crew or expensive gear to make car videos, which could be a bit awkward. Sorry, excuse me a sec. I just want to quickly have a bite of this banana bread. Mm. I made it earlier. 
that's good and that's really good so this next video always hits me right in the feels and that's what our center metal brand and online store is all about it's the joy around the ownership of classic and vintage cars and the owner of this next car embodies that more than just about anyone i've ever met and the car is pretty special too it was developed and only ever sold in south africa in very limited numbers it's the bmw 333i A little bit of history of this car. Um, I got her in 2010, when the time came up to, to actually grab her. And I thought to myself, uh, how do I get this beautiful machine? And uh, the first person that walked into the room was my grandmother. And uh, initially she, she sat down, gave me a key, sat down, whatever the case may be. And I said, uh, Ma, I need to talk to you. Um, so she sat down and she listened, and uh, I got down off my seat and I started rubbing her feet and telling her, you know what, uh, uh, there's, this, there's this, uh, this beautiful car. And uh, she, she, she actually identified the passion that I had for this car, and she asked, Arshad, do you plan to pay me back? And um, I told her, yes, ma, every cent. And the rest was history. So I grabbed my dad, we went and we looked, we opened up the garage. Well, when my dad looked at her, he basically dusted his hands off, off me and uh, the car and he said, you know what, uh, you eat it for yourself. It was uh, staying in, uh, in a heap of, I don't know how many years of dust. The beatings were off, um, the bumpers were hanging, the side tilts were off, the, the tires were all worn out, the steel was showing. Everyone saw a heap of rust, uh, but I saw the potential in her. The difference between this and any other 325IS or M20 motor is that this comes with the with M30 motor. M30 is a 3 litre. The whole block is different. The bore size is as big as a truck. <laughs> and the bottom end is a lot bigger and it obviously it generates from good cams, good engine breeding, all the way through to the drive train to, through to the rear wheels. Um, that's where your power comes from, is from your stroke. The camshafts that come into this vehicle are Alpina, as well as the intake. I'd love to meet the person that had the craziest idea to take the biggest engine and put it into the lightest body on the market and make it a production car. Give that man a bells. It's been hand built. Every single bolt, every single nut has been gone through by me. There's nothing, if I get stuck on the road, you know, it's a matter of checking a few small things, which it, does, it doesn't ever get, it doesn't ever happen. But uh, I know exactly what, what, what to look for, what to, what's gone into it, what can go wrong. It's actually very reliable for, for a car that's 33 years old. First time I drove a car, the car wasn't finely tuned, but everything was all brand new, you know, nursing it, uh, 
being very gentle with the gears and the acceleration and letting the, mo the, 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 the new rings bed in and uh, everything just gel. Myself and my dad, uh, we took her out to Olifantsfontein, where one of my buddies helped me set it up on the dyno. Um, just something else, eh? Awesome. I'm still, uh, trust me, it's thrown me around a few times. Um, so I'm, I'm getting the hang of it. I'm getting the hang of it, so you can drift it nicely around the, the corner. Uh, but the only thing is it, 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 likes to, it likes to point the rear to the front. <laughs> a, little bit of, a little bit of too much power. I enjoy it. I, you know, the thing is, it, it, it's meant to be driven. If something breaks, it's bound to, it's bound to happen. You, I mean, you can be driving a 2017 model and something can break. You have to be a little bit more gentle on them, but it's a car that I said, I'm not extremely gentle on it. So I don't mind burning a little bit of rubber, not to the point where the sparks in it are throwing. No, 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 I, I do respect her, but a little bit of fun is good. I mean, what's the point of, of taking her to the party and you can't dance? Walk to the fire. Walk to the fire. I cannot tell you what I would do to own a car like that. Big shout out to Ashad for his passion, enthusiasm, and looking after that car the way he does. Now, our journey video series celebrates this beautiful continent that we live on. And some of my best memories are from road trips. And that's the thing about cars. They're just machines, but they enable the road trip, the holiday, the adventure. And for this video, the wonderful ladies and gents at ZigZag Magazine got in touch with us and said, listen, there's this extremely rare wave that breaks on the Zambezi River. It cannot be predicted and its very existence is under threat. There's a tiny window for us to surf it. And if we leave right now, we might just catch it. So of course we said, well, let's go. And the results were pretty incredible. It's incredible because it's such a short, short window. There's a huge amount of risk and it's pretty shallow and we call it the pit of People have been, have been hurt on that wave. A bit closer. In our region, yeah, people believe that um, Yami Yami will, will keep you safe on the river. So we have these little little carvings. I'm 35 years old. I was on the WCT for two years. Where are you going surfing, boy? On the Zambezi River. Little standing way, right hander. I'm 
for two days straight and I'm very happy, I'm sure you're all very happy to see this river. Welcome to the mighty Slaving Zambezi. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty nervous, but keen at the same time. I wanna watch Raiden go first. most powerful two-footer you've ever seen. Yeah, I was panicking a bit there. <laughs> I was pretty deep though. You can see one, two rocks. That guy's surface. Kobe got a proper, proper licking. Yeah, he was under the water for a pretty long time. The river does like these weird little swells. If you're like in one of those swells, you're just like, I was sitting on my board once and like just, you just get sucked straight down. I think Kobe went back, he went from like a hole down into a swell there. I think I was stuck in the swell and then went into another one and another one. He went missing for a while. Yeah. 
行了啊。I was really stoked to surf that wave. It's something else, eh? The wave is flipping amazing. So much power and flow moving through that wave. But you can't be in the impact zone, otherwise you're going down. Yeah, oh, what an incredible, a completely unique experience. Very different to anything else I've done. Like through all the years I've been surfing, it's yeah, it's been absolutely amazing. <laughs> there, there is a, a large female croc um, in that pool. Um, she's been there for a while. Old Roy, he saw the croc and he kind of said, he said, I had the heebie-jeebies from upstream and we were all like, oh. never thought it was an issue, but obviously we didn't want to tell the surfers that. We're in the middle Batoka Gorge, 57 kilometers below Victoria Falls. The site of the Batoka Hydroelectric Power Scheme, which is a, a scheme they plan to dam this magnificent river, Zambezi River, to generate electricity mainly for South Africans. Most South Africans don't even know that they plan to flood this valley and kill the rafting industry. And it's just a damn shame that they're willing to flood a World Heritage Site. I really just love that story. That's one of the coolest videos I've ever been a part of. And big shout out to the ZigZag guys for pulling that off. Right, in this next video, it's actually two videos in one, two drag races coming up for you now. We called this series on our channel, the Warm Hatch Shootout. And that's because these aren't exactly hot hatches, but they're not boring at all. They're actually epic little cars, really fun to drive. And the reason we put this series together is because Toyota offered us one of the rarest hatchbacks in the world to race. It's called the Yaris Grimmin or GRMN, but that's a silly acronym, so I just call it the Grimmin. And it really is a special little thing. There are only three in the whole country and they're not even for sale. You can't even buy one. So we lined up some of its rivals. We rented the Kalani racetrack. We got Ashley Oldfield away from his computer for a little bit and we set up a couple of drag races and track races. So what we're going to show you now are the two drag races and you'll have to come back for episode three when we'll show you the grand finale. Here we go. In round one, the best German GTI that isn't a Golf would take on the smallest fast French car you can buy in South Africa and the winner would go on to fight the special Toyota. Hello and welcome back to the Kalani race circuit in Cape Town, South Africa. I am in the new Polo GTI. My esteemed colleague and racing driver Ash is in the new limited edition Renault Clio RS18 F1 EDC. Both of us have dual clutch gearboxes. I have a two liter turbocharged engine. Ash has a 1.6 liter turbocharged engine. My car has more torque, his car has more power, but my car is heavier. We both have launch control. This is going to be close. All right, let's do this, Ash. Rad, okay. It's attempt to do a drag race. You need to get out ahead of this Polo GTI or its torque will just eat me for the rest of the run. You need to get out in front, have a little bit of a lead, and then it'll be close. Sport mode, there we go. DSC off. Ready? 
Good launch, Ash. Got him to like 60. Yeah, man, I just can't hold you off. <laughs> I will give this fellow credit for one thing. It just spins its tires and the traction control does not get involved. And so the Polo took the checkered flag and earned its place to take on the Yaris Grimmen. In this round, I would pilot the Polo, and because the Yaris is a manual, we gave it to Ash because he had less chance of stuffing up the gear shifts. Can the little Toyota Grrr beat the Polo GTI with its two liter engine? He's got launch control. I'm in the manual. I've got faith that I can get enough grip out of here to beat him to the finish line. If I can get a better launch than him, I don't think he'll come back. I have more torque, he has more power, I'm heavier, he's lighter. Well, I mean, not him, you know, his car. I mean, he is also lighter than me, but also his car. Let's do this. I got a good launch out of the Polo. Second gear in that Yaris is phenomenal. I'm right next to him though. I'm gone. It's over. The Ares is getting out of here. Third. Fourth. I'm going. Oh, this is easy. And across the line. Winner, winner. It looks fast and it is fast, at least in a straight line. Join us for the finale in episode 3 of the Cars at Coza show when the Yaris Grimmen takes on the Polo GTI, Renault Clio RS and Mini Cooper S in a head-to-head -head track race. Alrighty, that's it. That's it for episode 2. I hope you enjoyed that. And just before I go, I want to tell you that Cars at Coza is fully up and running during the lockdown. If you want to just search for your next car, research your next car purchase, or maybe just watch a video of me doing something silly in your next car. Until then, stay safe, South Africa. Stay home, look after yourselves and each other. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be here same time, same place next week. Bye for now.